Let's talk about wide receivers because it is a deep group. I think it's a group that a lot of people are really optimistic in. I think it's a group that we don't have a ton of concrete answers in, though. Is that fair? That's fair. Um, We like the options, but we don't necessarily know the answers yet. That's, you know, I always phrase it that way. It's like, okay, there's a lot of questions. Do you have options or answers? Right. At wide receiver, they got options. I think they're good options. Um, I know you're the guy that you've been banging on the drum about all spring is Isaiah Nair mm-hmm. from that, day from day one. That's a dude that you, if he can stay healthy, and that's the caveat, right? And then you are all in on that guy. Outside of Nair, the prime suspects obviously are Jamal Banks coming in from Wake Forest. Um, I know you're high on Jalen Lloyd. A lot of people want to know what Malachi Coleman year two looks like. Jane Doss. He's starting to get more work, too. Yeah. I mean, still in the green jersey, but starting to get more work. Yeah, which is a good Coleman. sign. Yeah. Um, you've got Jaden Doss, who they were who was out of that group of freshmen, was the guy that was gonna play last year before he got hurt. Um so you, got, you got Demetrius Bell, who they who like redshirted last year, who they who they like a lot, and then a guy that you like a lot who has already gotten here that's in this class in Ja'Cory Barney. Yeah. I like Barney. So Barney and Bell are similar. Mm -hmm. Twitchy. Um, Pretty good change of direction. I think the thing for these guys, and I watch this close, and I got to credit my, I got to credit my son because he's so weird. Um, But I get it. He comes by it honestly. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, Verzal was like, ah, you know, take it easy. Like, let him relax. And, (laughs) Just let him enjoy practice, and he was right. Mm-hmm. But he'd say, "Hey, you know, three by one or two by two or back two, back away." Like he says stuff like that. And so we were watching because he likes to play wide receiver, and and we were watching um, guys track balls, mm-hmm. ball placement versus being able to track balls. And I'm telling you, we don't talk near enough about that because a lot of times quarterbacks will get incompletions. Because the wide receiver can't track the ball on balls, I feel like catchable are very catchable. Yeah, where that's that's where you want the ball. So let's let's break this down a little bit so people know exactly what you're talking about. When you're talking about tracking a ball, it's when hey, you're running your route. It's you know at which point in your route the quarterback should have thrown the ball. So it's then boom, looking, finding it in live in the air when it's already on its way to you. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's like if it's a uh, not to get too tech like to get too techie but like let's say they're in cover two like you have mm-hmm. two high safeties you got a you got corners that are responsible for flats mm-hmm. the, the the safeties generally speaking are going to get over the tops of those number ones mm-hmm. right they've got anything vertical half the field that's mm-hmm. the general premise of cover two so i know if that quarterback sees cover two and i and you say hey that's a whole throw that means you have to get it over the, the hole cor- in the defense over the corner in front of the in safety. front of the safety yep. That's where that ball has to go. See, the receiver has to get there, mm-hmm. right? That means you got to you got to beat the coverage. If you get an outside release, stay he also there. has to know the coverage, right? To right. Know where right. a where he's supposed to stop, right? And b where the ball's supposed to be. So it's like you know, and I see this a lot, and they work really, really hard on it, which I think is cool. But to the layperson, it may not seem like, well, what what are you talking about? You know, if you want that ball. A couple yards outside, you want that number, that ball between the hash and the numbers. Yeah, you want it outside, outside the that, numbers. Yeah, but not out of bounds. Yeah. So between the hash and the or the between the numbers and the sidelines, mm-hmm. I should say. Excuse me. And I'm a receiver, and that ball is there. Like that. That's that's the ball you got to come with. Come because down. as a, as an offensive coordinator, you can't do any better than that. Yeah. You right? got the look that you wanted. You, you got, got the, the matchup that you wanted, and some of the, the and the rest of that is on the receiver. Yeah, so the rest I think of it's execution. Those are the things that I think they're continually getting better at because when you're young guys uh, and you're not used to, to going to get balls like that or you maybe come from an offense where they just get it to you in space and all of a sudden you can run. Yeah, like there's slip some, out and then you there, do your there, thing There's something and... to, you know, when to look. Running with my my head up, does it slow me down? Mm-hmm. Or that was a good ball. Like I've seen a do lot of – drift when your head's up when you're tracing the ball? So that's was the thing on – it's really hard one, not to do. One of the days that I was there. like, try doing it. Try looking up and back and trying to rush straight, run in a straight line. So really that's hard. that's the thing. Yeah. Right. If you're going to straighten the DV up and you're going to win vertically, like stay skinny or stay straight, mm-hmm. 
to give yourself room to on fade, the sideline, to give yourself room to look over give, your shoulder and give your quarterback room to throw the ball to where the DB can't get it. So those little nuances mm -hmm. are things that that track speed or or verticality or whatever can't really. Yeah, you have gauge. to learn the uh, that their skills that you have yeah, to learn. The the whole running with your your head, especially in Memorial Stadium. Mm -hmm. Where the wind is tricky, it's very, very undersold okay. to throw the ball in Lincoln from any time from the middle of October to the end of the season. Mm. It is truly a box of chocolates. Is it a crosswind? That's another one of the little things I appreciate about Sharpie. He's called so many games. He can look at the flags. Even though they're not doing the same thing, he'll say something like, hey, you know, that's a little bit of a crosswind. What you're going to get is this, this, and this. And mm. I'm just like. Uh, all that, from, all that from just just having the window open, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> you know, you know. But you're sat, sticking your finger out the window. I didn't get that sharp. And so, and we hear it right. <laughs> Quarterbacks throwing with the wind, against the wind, yeah. and ooh, that guy was open. There's just way more to it mm -hmm. than just whether the quarterback puts it on a guy or not. So I, I like that's with this young group, with some of the young guys. I think I really think. That's what they're working on because sometimes ball placement can be pretty good and you don't get a completion out of it. That's when you just have to, t you, you, you can't be so results oriented. You have to look at the process. Too. Well, and the thing that we never talk about with ball placement is it's entirely dependent on where the wide receiver is supposed to be mm -hmm. and them actually getting there. And, and, you know, is it a man beater? Are you, are you in, in man under where you may have a, a chance to initially run, but then there's going to be a squad, a sitting defender, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, this is a really hard skill, but we try to teach it young. Mm -hmm. um, at least any place I've been or within my own household, right? Like running through the catch. Mm hmm where instead of like slowing down and going kind of choppy feet for the ball. Yep. Yeah. Or you may get a collision mm -hmm. impending, but make the DB play through you. Yeah. See, that's not something for everybody, but it's, if you learn to do that, you're either going to get penalties or DBs avoid you. And we say things like this, Oh, that should have been a pick, mm -hmm. but it's not realistic to say that. Cause in order to get the pick, you may have to play through yeah, you may have to the go. receiver. Yeah. And which means so, so it looks e it looks easy to say on TV when we're like, yeah. oh man, you should have had that. Well, you playing through that guy? <laughs> you, you know, well, so it, especially now that some of the guys that they're dealing with are pretty big bodies. Yeah. But you know what? So not all. Like some of these guys up close are yeah. Are are different than I kind of think they are when when I'm watching them on TV. But it is I think those little nuances are 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 things that the young guys you you just don't get naturally. So and it's always funny because it's like we'll just send them on a go router. You don't have two routes that that this guy can do yeah. well. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But the defense knows that too. They know that they haven't seen any crosses. They know mm -hmm. that they haven't seen any digs. They know that they haven't seen any over routes you're either getting stops or goes right like mm -hmm. it's part of the evolution for Jalen Lloyd is it's it's route running like what happens when I'm not on a on a vertical mm -hmm. or you know a little skinny post or something like that like you know am I straightening guys up am I stemming them can I am I running after the catch or Malachi on, Coleman too. on like these yeah. shallow crossing runs? yeah 100 mm -hmm. so Malachi Coleman has physically everything that you would want out of wide receiver well you watch a guy like um it was a good example. You like you watch a guy like Demetrius is Bell, like Demetrius Bell's footwork, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, this guy working in the slot would be a nightmare. A little but, different, but right? There's sitting down. There's where's the soft spots? There's mm -hmm. uh, throwing guys open. There's again running through the catch. We 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 get these. I was I would tell these these stories about. Uh, I remember we were getting ready to play. I always use Bellevue West because th those that's just an offensive concept sometimes where it's like, okay, right? They can do this. They can. You have to give up something, mm -hmm. right? Because the concept is pretty sound. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, what are we willing to live with? And can we tackle these guys in space? Yeah. And and I would say, so it's their passing offense. And I, I kind of like Millard South concepts. Mm -hmm. They're tough, but they have a few – especially this year, they'll have a few more options. Yeah, in the passing game, for sure. Right? So, and and um, 
So when you're looking at what you'll give up, that's okay because mm-hmm. you, you can't stop it all. Like, yeah. there's a reason there's there's positive yards on on on, on offense. So w- when you're looking at okay, where are we vulnerable? What can we do? Like defenses know that too. Mm-hmm. So the cat and mouse is now okay. Can we mix it up enough, or can we can we? Sometimes you just have to guess right. <laughs> Sure. Right. Yeah. It's like if you're in a three by one based on tendency. Yeah. If you're in a three by one and he's at the bottom of the numbers, you know that he's probably that one receiver is probably going to work his way out. If he's at the top of the numbers, he's probably coming inside. If he's got weight on his front foot, he's probably pushing vertical. If he's a little relaxed, he's not in a hurry to go anywhere. So teaching guys those tricks of the trade Mm -hmm. so they don't have those tells like you watch these DBs and they get quizzed. They're looking at all those things. Mm-hmm. So immediately when wide receivers break the huddle, what are you giving away? Mm-hmm. That Those are the things that young guys kind of have to learn. And that's that's on top of just the concepts, mm-hmm. right? Like what will Coach Thomas and Coach Satterfield collectively bring to the table in the passing game? Are we going to see a more intermediate game? Will they stress you from snap of the ball to – the intermediate level will they work outside oh, so the we'll numbers? Sideline to sideline. Because because where typically don't young quarterbacks like to go with the ball? Um, middle of the field. Middle of the field because it gets a little it's crowded. Con- it's it's condensed yeah, in there. It a lot, a little, lot, lot of bodies. A lot of noise. A lot of traffic. Harder to see. Right. So if a team's yeah. in like this is still too football, but like let's say two man, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to play two man. But what are you going to give up? You're going to give up. A, maybe some a scrambling quarterback mm-hmm. or, or something like that. So you have to, so that offense has to know what are we in and how does it fit with what we do? That's the most difficult thing. I think for young wide receivers, especially if you're in a big boy passing offense. So I want to go back to something that coach rule said, I think it was last Thursday and what you were talking about reminded me of this. And he was somebody asked him about the passing game, and he goes, "The passing game is about the intricacy with which you're able to take advantage of what the defense gives you." Man, one hundred. So I didn't even hear that, but see, that's what I'm. That saying. That might not be an exact quote, no, but, but that's pretty that, close. That, that that's what I that's what I'm saying. Right. So there there'll be some things that we we would give up to to and know, that's Miller's, what we talked about the scaffolding to, to Miller South or, or to Bellevue West. Yeah, they just have to be willing to do that more times than not. Yeah. We, we're not going to give you what you want, mm-hmm. but you can take some things from and us. And if you can beat us doing it, I mean, we, we talk about it with Creighton basketball all the time, right? Like with the way that Coach McDermott runs his defense, if you can make mid-range shots all game, you win. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's kind of that's 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 kind of the premise. Yeah. Like if you are able to beat us doing the thing we want to give you, congratulations. So, you, you know, so it's like conceptually, and we know, so we had to go back and we had to look at all this, this film from seven on seven. Mm-hmm. And, and people kind of roll their eyes at seven on seven, but there are just some route concepts in seven on seven mm-hmm. where, where a school like Miller South is going to be built to have success, mm-hmm. right? Where you have, you have an over route, you have a, you have a backside dragger, you have a little stop route where you can see clearly like those things are going there. That's a very difficult team to beat mm-hmm. on in seven on seven. But what happens in, in real games where you can kind of game plan then it then it's more reliant on okay can the quarterback see it mm-hmm. we're gonna give this up but can but, they see do, it? but do you but do you do they know recognize where it is it? yeah and seven on seven it's almost impossible it's like shoot man you better make a play one on one because they yeah. got they got fellas right yeah yeah right <laughs> right so but when you're playing eleven on eleven it, it's you can make things a lot muddier so so for that, the quarterback that's the difference between transitioning from a really good mm-hmm. seven on seven wide receiver cornerback even DBs for that matter mm-hmm. I watch Miami Raw and. And I watched, we watched seven on seven this weekend for, mm-hmm. you know, 2025s and stuff coming. And I'm like, you know what? That, that, that route is great. That, that will never work. And yeah, because the QB is never going to see and it. And that will never work in 11 on 11. But you can see a lot of individual talent in, yeah, skills. in, in route running. Right. Right. I just, one of the better kept secrets that never really got a chance to, to really do his thing. I, I, he's one of the best wide receivers that I've seen come through here. In the last handful of years, mm-hmm. was um, what was it? Was it Kyrell? Was it Jordan Bellevue West number eleven? Oh, um, he was unbelievable. Yeah, and the the thing that made him 
so good was not only was it his running after the catch, it was his route running. He would know where to – he cooked us once on a backside, mm-hmm. and we had been giving it up. I mean, we're – like, there's some things we're willing to concede. Mm-hmm. He kind of sensed it, and he cooked us, and mm-hmm. he did it repeatedly. So then it's like, oh, boy. Yeah. In his second half, he's like, uh, what are we going to – so, like, there are some guys that – That's one of those adjustments, right, where you say, hey – deciding to give this thing up will get us killed. We got to do something else. Yeah, because you go in saying, okay, we're willing to do this. It's like there are some things, you know, if if if, if I was in, you know, quarter, quarter, half or whatever with their secondary or they're in three deep or whatever, they have some real tendencies how they like to play coverage. Mm-hmm. It changes once you get inside the 30, and Parker's really, really good at that. Mm-hmm. What you have to be willing to do is be patient enough to take the throws that they're giving you. Mm-hmm. He's so Parker is so good at what he does. He knows that if you're on from near hash to far hash, if you're going to complete a ball more than 10 yards, he knows that, and I'm making this number up, it's mm-hmm. the ball's got to travel 37 yards in the air. Mm-hmm. I'm not devoting a ton of attention yeah, that way. A really long throw. It, it, you know, he he's the guy that actually taught us too, and we, we kind of took this from him. You know what hard what are hard passes like? Passes in the flats to running backs and and swing routes. Mm-hmm. Not those not look super, like easy they, throws. They look. He has some ridiculous statistics on completion. They're percentage. short throws. Yeah, they're not easy. Throws. Yeah, and so and so what is yeah simple versus easy? So what is yeah. you know in in Nebraska's concept in some of their defenses, their their coverage. There are some things that they're willing to give up. Because they're going to rally and, and tackle. And you, sometimes it would drive fans crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, it's it's third and this. Why are they doing this? Well, so the next step for their defense mm-hmm. is to kind of evolve in their tendencies. Hey, we know third and, and change like cha- change just means we're, it's manageable enough. It could be seven, eight, or nine mm-hmm. where you're going to get a change throw. Like those guys are getting to the marker mm-hmm. and they're going to look for the ball. So Nebraska has to now evolve into okay. Do I want to press here? If I'm going to bail, I can't be in a hurry to get out. If my if my heels are already at seven, I got to be disciplined enough to like not give ground. In yeah. the meantime, so little things like mm-hmm. that, right? So you've got to know like, hey, I've got one step back before I got to yeah. go. And and in the meantime, yeah. wide receivers are thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that safety rolled down. I got to get him to be take here. two steps back in order to get to where I need to go. So for young guys, sometimes that can be kind of difficult to see. Now, the reason that I think college receivers have made quick transitions to the NFL is because the NFL, at least in the secondary, a lot of times has played more like seven on seven mm. because you can't really touch guys after five yards. Yeah. So you guys, so it is, play it is. So those guys can transition quick, but going from high school, to college a lot more physical is a lot is a lot tougher than yeah. going from college mm. to the pros and my, this is just my opinion you know it, it's funny that you you bring up kind of the willingness to take what the defense gives you right that's something you hear all the time and it's hard I'm, it's hard but there is a level of discipline that it requires that goes exactly against human nature right we are not built it's the reason everybody wants to invest in crypto instead of in Berkshire Hathaway, right? Yeah, it's a it's a high cost of entry both places, but you're like, ah, if I invest in, in crypto, maybe I can 10x my money in the next year where it's like Berkshire Hathaway, you're going to get a 12% return. It's like, well, most people don't want the 12% return year over year over year. They want the 10x their money tomorrow. I saw it in my former life where I was a fraud investigator. You know what is almost impossible to detect? small disciplined fraud you know what every Office space right you know what every single person is in the that, world is that does? the name of that movie yep. Shane? you know what, what every single person in the world does gets greedy so every single person gets greedy that's the only reason anybody gets caught is because human nature does not allow them to just continue the slow bleed to do the small thing that selfish. is selfish and, and again it's kind of like a defense Fraud systems are generally set up. Don't do fraud, by the way. Fraud systems are generally set up to give you something in the sense of because you can't stop everything. Uh, I I don't know kind of like what they like, how they were going to grade or or what happened on set. I thought for the lack of um, chunk plays and, and, and big pass plays, I thought the quarterbacks threw the ball better than their results would yield. Mm. 
So that's what you're talking about. Like, I, like I, I truly, and, and again, now I'm listening to my 14 year old, but it's just us. So we're just talking back and forth, mm -hmm. but it just seemed like the balls were better than the results. So mm -hmm. that's something that a young group. Okay. Did I fade? Once I stemmed him and straightened him up, what kind of, what kind of room am I giving my QB? So you can see coach McGuire just coaching his, his tail off. It's mm -hmm. just like, Doing the little thing, he's a. I like him a ton. I, I said this before. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I not only is he a good person. I think his attention to detail and and kind of the work ethic because he's got a lot of young squirrels. Like, it's a lot of young guys. In that it, room. It's it would be a headache to mm -hmm. to to corral all those guys, and uh, they work at it. And so it's very hard to have a young receiving core mm -hmm. and young quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Right, so it, it could take some time potentially, and I don't know, but it could take some time sure. before. Plus, you got new eyeballs with Coach Thomas and and things like that. So, it, it, I think the wide receiver evolution is. You made a good point earlier about um, what was the answers versus options, options versus answers. Yeah, you got a lot of options. We don't know. You, if we don't, have have, you don't have a ton of answers. Yet. We don't. Yeah, we don't have any answers yet. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I uh, got about a minute left here on the wide receiver talk. Um, out of the young guys, is it fair to say that the guys that are able to do the little things best are the ones that are going to get on the field over and over again? So add that like consistently who can embrace repetition. Mm. And then let me ask this, because if you can hang in there and not have to sub out, I would never listen when we're in 10 personnel or mm -hmm. whatever person make the coach pull me out. Yeah, don't volunteer. Yeah, and if I can work in the slot or I can be an X or a Z, like, do that too. Mm -hmm. Like, be on the field as much as possible. Don't be the guy that runs, like, three routes and is and looking to the sideline. Yeah, like, so being in elite-level shape mm -hmm. is part of it. Last thing real quick, is there a young guy that you've seen that you really like in terms of being able to do a lot of these little things? There's a couple guys I think that can get there. Okay. Yeah, for sure. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna take some time, and they need they need these live reps. They need to get smoked by a DB every now and again too. Yeah, right. I mean, no, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, Gifford and them guys patrolling the middle, near misses versus remote misses. <laughs> right, you got to know that the bad thing that happens to you isn't the you guys end of the world. Snatch your soul back there. We've got Marhead Sports Radio coming up next.